We have a few problems. There's been no release date for the Breath of the Wild 2, and our friend Link here keeps moving on his own. And that's bad, especially when standing on the edge of a mountain. The reason Link is having trouble standing still is because the Joy-Con is broken. But we're gonna fix that. Today, we're gonna fix the Nintendo Switch. Let's get started. The Nintendo Switch is a fantastic console, and my kids love it. Nintendo always does a fantastic job with their hardware. However, there's been a number of cases reported that the Joy-Cons can go bad after heavy use. Using a kit like this, the joysticks can easily be replaced. This kit was available from Amazon for about $20, and comes with everything needed to repair a joystick. I'll have it linked below. To take apart the Joy-Con, you'll need to remove these custom tri-head screws. There's four of them around the outside, and they're very simple to remove. Don't use a regular Phillips screwdriver or else it will strip the heads. If you're following along using this kit, it's the one marked with a yellow head. Also, when taking apart electronic devices like this, you'll want to organize the screws. Outside of the camera view, I'm setting them on a rubber mat that I use for all of my videos. Make sure to keep them organized. Now with the screws removed, I take this non-marking spudger and go along the outside edge and pry it apart. It will click a few times as you pry it open, and that's okay. Now before you completely pull apart the cover, you need to eject these ribbon cables. There's a tiny latch that you lift up and allows the ribbon cables to come free. If you don't first unlatch it, it will tear the ribbon cable and ruin the Joy-Con. With the bottom ribbon cable free, I next take my spudger and pry out the battery. With the battery free, I next remove these two screws. Make sure you don't remove all the screws or else it will be much more difficult later on. There's one additional screw on the bottom that you'll need to remove to take out this plastic layer. When taking this out, make sure to lift very slowly as there's a hidden ribbon cable underneath. Undo the latch and carefully slide it out. This plastic panel houses the L and R buttons and the springs that make them work. These ribbon cables transfer the input from the L and R buttons. Now let's take a look at the replacement Joy-Con switch. It's a very simple design with a single ribbon cable here. This is the casing for the entire joystick and will replace the piece that broke off on my switch. This silver square is the underside of the joystick and removing these two screws will allow me to replace it. Before removing the screws, I flip this latch and remove another ribbon cable. In fact, to take out the second screw, there's actually a fourth ribbon cable that we need to remove. Again, I undo the latch and slide it out. If you don't take it out, it could easily tear. Sometimes instead of replacing the Switch joystick, you just need to recalibrate it in the Switch menu. But if it's physically broken like this, it needs to be replaced. For the final step, we do need to remove this last cable. With that removed, it's much easier to put in the new joystick. The one that comes in this kit is nearly identical to the official Nintendo one. To hook it up, I align the ribbon cable to the socket. Now putting these in can be kind of difficult and sometimes frustrating. Make sure not to kink or bend the cable at a sharp angle or it could permanently damage it. Some of the cables have a T-shaped head which allows you to use a tool to connect it, making it much easier. When you've slid in a cable, make sure to close the latch as soon as you can so that it catches it and doesn't slide out again. One more piece of advice is that the cables go in much less deep than expected. To sum it up, these things are fragile, so be careful. The bottom layer is complete by connecting these four ribbon cables, so now I need to put on the middle layer and connect this final fifth cable. This one for me was the most difficult out of all of them, so make sure you have an extra dose of patience. Fortunately, the head is T-shaped, so you can use tools to help guide it in. Now we need to put on the second R trigger button. I align it up with the set grooves, and then use a tool to push the spring back into place. Taking the plastic cover, I line it up so that the cable is not pinched when I set it down. There's a small gap in the top right corner that the cable can be placed. It's also a good time to check that the springs on the trigger button are set in place. Throughout this video, you may have noticed that the battery was connected. I would recommend disconnecting it when doing repairs like this, especially if it's your first time. Now this repair was done on the left Joy-Con, but I was also having problems with the Z button on the right Joy-Con as well. Although very similar, there are a few critical differences between the two. I'll review those differences shortly. 
First, let's review our repair, and it looks great. It feels like it's a brand new controller. I'm gonna start charging the left one and start the repair on the right side. Now the issue that I was having with this one was that the Z button wasn't clicking. In fact, it wouldn't register at all, making zooming in to find the Sheikah towers much more difficult for our friend Link. To begin the repair, I need to remove the same four screws around the outside. These also require a tri-headed screwdriver, so make sure to organize them separately from the other screws. Next, pry open the outside edge, but be very careful when opening as there is an antenna on the right side in addition to the two ribbon cables. The antenna needs to be disconnected. The best way to do that is to slide a tool underneath the metal end, rotate slightly to pry it off. Avoid pulling on the antenna wire directly or you could tear it off from the metal end. With the antenna disconnected, I next want to remove the bottom ribbon cable, then move on to taking out the battery. With the battery out, I can move on to the three screws that hold down the center plastic piece. Just like the left side, there are multiple ribbon cables that need to be removed. Disconnecting the third ribbon cable separates the outer shell from the motherboard. Again, on the right Joy-Con, you're going to find the antenna. It's a very simple design and is almost identical as to what you would find on a Wi-Fi or Bluetooth card in a laptop or computer. Just like before, I need to remove these two screws to take out the joystick. The joystick on the right side is much more accessible as it's in the middle of the Joy-Con and the screws aren't hidden underneath the ribbon cable like on the left side. It's an interesting design concept that Nintendo didn't mirror the two joysticks on the top, but instead chose to make the right joystick in the middle of the right controller. I don't know the exact reason for that design choice, but it works great. Taking a look at the ribbon cables, I found this one very difficult to put back together. The latch kept closing, preventing the cable from connecting. It's also located along the edge of the controller wall and there's a screw port blocking it. Be extra patient so you don't damage anything. To finalize this repair, connect the two cables on the opposite side, then throw on the middle plastic support piece. Before screwing it down, grab the R buttons and place them inside. To seal it shut, put in the remaining three screws. Throw in the battery and we'll hook up the antenna next. To do that, guide the metal head connector to the receiving end and push down on it. The other end of the antenna has a microchip attached and it can slide down into this little groove. Do a quick inspection that everything is secure and then close it shut. It's a good time to go through and check all the buttons to make sure that they feel like they're clicking correctly. The joystick sounds much better. It wouldn't click at all before, so that's a good sign. Seal down the four screws and we're good to go. The joystick really does sound and feel much better. There's an almost immediate reaction to the spring when pushed and it feels much more sensitive to the touch. All of the other buttons seem to be working correctly, so let's pair it up and give it a go. The initial pairing went well, and now begins the real test. Heading out to the Dueling Peaks, I'm able to look around with both the left and right Joy-Cons. The joysticks feel like they're brand new and are very sensitive. Clicking the joystick, the Z button also works great. I can move around much more quickly, and Link stopped his urge to randomly walk off a mountain. My kids will be very happy. So let's grab some random food, fight some ninjas, and hopefully stop Ganon from running around like he owns the place. And we'll take this as another win. Thanks for watching.